Hey guys, how's it going? So it is that time of year again where we get to start talking about some of the brand new plants that are coming out this year in 2021 from Proven Winners. Now in the past, I've been able to do all of the brand new plants in one video, but now there are so many, which is really exciting that I'm breaking this up into three, possibly more than three videos, because like today, we're gonna start by talking about some of the new shrubs that are available, and there are 30. 30 brand new varieties we get to talk about. So I might get through them all in this video, I might not, we might have to break this up into two, but I think there's some really exciting new developments in some of these plants. Now, I have very limited experience, little to no experience <laughs> with some of these plants. I have some of the hydrangeas. Um, we were able to plant like the quick fire fab, which I'll go over some of those uh, details in a little while. Um, I've got the Arctic fire uh, yellow dogwood and Russell really wants to be involved this morning. Um, but I am just super excited about these things, even though I haven't even personally seen some of them like in the flesh yet. I'm really excited for this new group of plants because there's a lot of diversity. There are some plants that are really good for southern warm climates, some that are good for northern colder climates, and that's not the case every single year. So I feel like there's something in here that will fit most all growing climates. So let's just jump right into it. Number one is the Sunjoy Neo Barberry, which looking at the picture initially, I just thought I've got to have some of these in my garden. And Aaron is not the biggest fan of Barberry, but I think I could tuck a couple in here or there. And I think he will appreciate the color. Um, not only that, but it grows into a very nice rounded shape. So you don't really feel the need to constantly prune on it. It doesn't like take on this wild form. It only grows about 30 to 32 inches tall and wide. Zone five through eight, they love full sun, super tough in the landscape, very adaptable to a lot of different soil types. Uh, and as most barberries go, resistant to deer. Number two is the Lo and Behold Ruby Chip Butterfly Bush. And this is another one that's really great for a hot, sunny area in the landscape, very low maintenance, and they provide a ton of color and they bring in hummingbirds and butterflies and honeybees. It's a really wonderful plant to have in the garden. And I have a couple of the Lo and Behold Butterfly Bushes, not this one yet, but I have the Ice Chip and the Pink Microchip. And they have been phenomenal plants. Uh, they grow about 30, well, the ruby chip anyway, grows about 30 to 32 inches tall and wide. So it makes it very easy to tuck into the landscape, way easier than the traditional huge butterfly bushes. And the ruby chip is much like the Miss Molly, which I do have the Miss Molly in our garden. It grows a lot bigger, has very bright magenta pink blooms. The ruby chip takes kind of the characteristics of the Miss Molly and packs it into that smaller package. So they start pushing blooms about midsummer. They keep on going all the way through a frost. You don't need to deadhead. They'll just keep producing blooms resistant to deer and zone five through nine. Number three is actually a series of clematis vines called Sparky. So there's Sparky blue, Sparky purple, Sparky pink, all of which grow about six to eight feet tall and wide, zone five through eight, disease resistant, do not need to be pruned. And they typically bloom about April through June, We're very strong, and then they'll send out more blooms sporadically on new growth through the rest of the season. And the way that they uh, describe the blooms is I think interesting. They say it's like a little whirlwind, like a little whirlwind of uh, petals with a fluffy yellow center. And I just think that they look really delicate and unique and I'm really excited to grow some I'm on a fence line actually. I have a particular part of the fence I thought would be really pretty to have these kind of rambling on. Um, and like other clematis, they do like to have their roots shaded while their heads are in the sun. So they like to bask in the sun whilst having their roots cool. Number four is Arctic Fire Yellow Dogwood, which I actually do have in our greenhouse. I'm ready to plant them this spring. I'm so excited about it because this is a, an improved version on older varieties of yellow dogwood. They have better branching, more compact growth, brighter colored stems. They grow about four to five feet tall, five to six feet wide, zoned two through seven. So for those of you who live in very cold climates, maybe even where you have deer, because they are deer resistant, this is a really good one. And it's also a very, like probably one of the more shade tolerant shrubs you can plant. Um, now they do produce blooms in the spring that are followed by white berries. So they offer not only that wonderful winter interest, but you get spring interest, you get a beautiful full compact shrub during the summer, and then you get the white berries later on. Now, if you do site this one in a shadier area, do know that you won't get quite as many blooms, not quite as many berries, but it will still thrive and grow for you. Also, it's supposed to tolerate a very wide range of soil conditions, which I do believe, because we have pretty crummy soil here in Eastern Oregon, very high pH, and dogwoods do really well for us. Number five is the Velvet Fog Smoke 
smoke bush, which I'm very excited to get planted in my own garden. Now it gets kind of big, five to eight feet tall, six feet wide. So you do want to make sure that you've got the space for it. But the uh, contrast between the blooms and the leaves is so beautiful. So midsummer, it pushes its really smoky, kind of ethereal looking bright pink blooms and much more prolifically than the traditional types of smoke bushes. And so you take that beautiful pink color and put it up against their kind of waxy blue leaf color so pretty it's just a very pleasing combination and the leaves are also more dense and it's more compact um, in appearance because of the density of growth zone five through eight very adaptable to a lot of different soil types and you can grow it as either a large shrub or a small tree number six is the paraplu hibiscus series there's two new varieties in the series paraplu pink ink and paraplu violet they are a type of rosa sharon hibiscus which uh, are in the shrub category because they create a woody structure as opposed to the hibiscus that create the huge dinner plate sized blooms those are a perennial because we cut those back and they come back fresh from the ground every single year but the paraplu pink ink so it's this white bloom that they describe the coloration as a tie-dye effect so a white bloom with pink and red coloration that come from the center toward the outer part of the bloom. And then the uh, paraplu violet is like a really bright iridescent violet blue, which is usually only seen in tropical hibiscus. Each one of these grows about five to eight feet tall, four to five feet wide. They like full sun. The thing I like about the structure of this series of hibiscus is that they look more graceful. Some of the older varieties are very rigid. They're very vase shaped, very like stiff. These move gently in a breeze, so they bring more movement to your garden. They also have a super abundant set of flowers. And this is another type that starts blooming usually midsummer, goes through the end of the year, like through a good solid frost. Usually mine are still going and they provide color through those kind of uh, hotter dog days of summer, if you will. Um, and so they add a lot of interest to the garden. So now we're going to get into the section of new hydrangeas, which there are several new ones this year. Number seven on my list is Invincible Garnetta Hydrangea, which is a type of hydrangea arborescence or smooth hydrangea. So they have very full rounded blooms and this variety, they emerge a deep garnet color and then they age to a rich dark pink. The really cool thing about this one is that the reblooming ability is much longer. So it will go for months instead of just weeks, which extends your season of blooms out so much further. It grows about 30 inches by 30 inches, which makes it very easy to tuck into the landscape again. I love these types of plants that they have made into compact varieties because not always do we have a huge amount of space to put something, but we want, you know, that that texture or that look. Um, it has very strong and supportive stems, so you're not going to deal with flopping uh, in zone three through eight. Number eight is a hydrangea macrophylla or big leaf hydrangea called Let's Dance Big Band, which have beautiful big blooms that are either a rich kind of reddish pink color or a royal blue, depending on your soil chemistry. And not only do they bloom on old wood, but they also produce blooms on new wood as well, which not all macrophyllas do. The key to getting them to bloom more on new wood, which this particular variety has the ability to do more like more frequently than others is to make sure that they're fertilized properly so that they're growing vigorously throughout the season so they recommend like a rose based fertilizer like rose tone in the early spring and again in the late spring you want to make sure not to fertilize it after about July because it can mess with their dormancy period but typically I'm only fertilizing my hydrangeas once a year but on this particular one, doing it twice in the spring will kind of help give it the energy it needs to create more blooms for you. This variety is a zone five through nine and can withstand cold winters better than other macrophyllas. Uh, it grows about 30 inches by 30 inches. And you do want to make sure, even though this one will bloom on old and new wood, to put it somewhere in your garden where you can just let it grow to its full size. Because as with all mac macrophyllas, you just want to not prune on them. <laughs> because if you do that, it will adversely affect the amount of blooms that you will get. Number nine is another hydrangea macrophylla called wee bit giddy and this one grows even smaller or stays even smaller 24 inches tall by 30 inches wide zone five through nine it also has the very dark glossy thick leaves and strong stems i love the color of the blooms on this one they're very deep red pink and higher ph soil and then a deep violet blue if treated with aluminum sulfate or in more acidic soil i really just like the tight compact growth of this one because i think it also makes it really good for containers and that kind of brings me to number 10 which is also another hydrangea macrophylla called wee bit grumpy and this one <laughs> the name cracks me up and i think it's stuck 
because they were uh, kind of working with a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves kind of theme with some of the hydrangeas. And so every time somebody would see this beautiful plant blooming, which it's like a very bright red in uh, higher pH soil and then a very deep blue in lower pH soil, um, they would ask, what is that plant's name? And they would see the name Grumpy on the tag and it'd make them laugh. And so it just stuck over time. But it also grows 24 inches tall, 30 inches wide, zone five through nine, a very tough, sturdy plant. And my understanding is that both the wee bit giddy and wee bit grumpy hydrangeas can withstand colder temperatures than your other conventional hydrangea macrophyllas. So number 11 is the Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangea, which is a beautiful lace cap type hydrangea. The uh, flowers are semi-double, they're star-like, making the whole bloom look very showy. Bubblegum pink in higher pH soils, in lower pH soils, or if you treat with aluminum sulfate, they're a beautiful soft periwinkle blue. The good thing about this hydrangea, which I love, um, is that it really needs a very little period of leafy growth in order to produce new blooms. So it will uh, bloom on old wood and new wood, um, and it'll start very early on in the spring, and it'll go all the way through frost. So this variety also sets buds from the base of the stem to the top, which is not typical. Uh, and I think it's such a wonderful new development in hydrangeas because even though you still shouldn't prune on this one, you should put it somewhere in the garden where it can grow, grow its full size, which is three to four feet tall and three feet wide. But if you accidentally prune on it, or if a deer comes along and eats off the top buds, or if you have an extra hard winter and then you know the tops get decimated somehow, you know that there are still flower buds sitting lower on the plant that will turn into blooms. Because there's really nothing more discouraging than planting a hydrangea and then having something like that happen and missing out on blooms for an entire season. It also has very dark colored leaves and it's a zone five through nine. So the next three are paniculata type hydrangeas or panicle hydrangeas. So they have blooms that are more uh, panicle shaped. They're uh, thicker at the base and they kind of taper off to a point at the top. The first one's called limelight prime. This is number 12 on my list. And honestly, the limelight, I don't understand how they could even make limelight better. I have limelight in my garden and I love it. It performs so great every single year. But this new development, apparently they have stronger stems, so they stand up better to more adversity. My limelight's already amazing though. Mine never flops. I'm like, how strong do you need these stems to be? Um, the blooms start earlier in the season though, and I do think that's an amazing um, new development and it stays a little bit smaller. So four to six feet tall and four to five feet wide, which makes it very convenient to tuck into your landscape. Also the blooms. So, you know, they get these kind of creamy green colored blooms and they typically age to kind of a reddish pink, but these colors are apparently more bold in this new variety. So you'll get a little bit more uh, punch, I guess, of color. And I have some of these sitting in our cold frame, ready to plant out this spring. And I'm so excited to kind of compare notes and see how much better they do than my traditional limelights. And they are a zone three through eight. I think both of them are the, the traditional one and this new one, which means that they're incredibly winter hardy and paniculata type hydrangeas can be pruned in late winter, early spring. It's kind of nice to have some of those plants that you don't have to worry because they bloom on new wood. You can go in and kind of size control them or shape them up how you need to when they start to, uh, the buds start to swell in the spring and you know you're gonna get prolific blooms anyway. Number 13 is the Firelight Tidbit Hydrangea, which I believe is one of the smallest paniculata hydrangeas that's out there, growing about two to three feet tall and wide. This one also has very thick stems, a mounded, pleasing growth habit, and they start blooming about midsummer. So they come out with these bright white blooms that start to age in these really deep, vibrant red and pink colors. So not only do you get a multi-season interest in terms of bloom color, but this one produces fall color. It's like a orangish red leaf color in the fall, which is amazing. Not all hydrangeas do that. So I'm very excited to see how this one does. And number 14 is actually the last hydrangea of the new plants this year. It's called Quick Fire Fab. We actually planted six of these in our new property last year. They uh, did really well. I'm very excited to see what they do this season. So they're very much like the traditional quick fire, except for their blooms are a little bit bigger. Um, they start earlier and they're this bright white, but then this watermelon pink color starts at the base and it quickly moves up to the tip of the bloom. And it's just a beautiful, very, very showy plant. And I'm not sure how to explain the look of the blooms because it's a very different, very delicate textural difference that you don't find in other paniculatas. I hope we have a good picture to show you of that. They grow six to eight feet tall, five to six feet wide, and they are a zone three through eight. So you do need 
kind of a large area to put these. So now that we're done with the hydrangea section, I think we're gonna stop the video here because I'm about halfway done with the new shrubs and that's a lot to digest in one sitting. So I think we'll pick up and do the other half in the next video. And it's just really interesting. I kind of wanted to share my experience learning how these shrubs even make it um, to the line because it's really rigorous and I had no idea what went into it. And it kind of gives me more appreciation for these new plants and more excitement. Um, so we had a chance to visit Spring Meadow Nursery, which is the home of Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs four years ago or something like that. And they showed me uh, with their roses in particular, how they trial these roses. And it takes five to 10 years typically to trial a single shrub. Um, so to have 30 ready this year, like that's intense, that's crazy. But with roses, they pack them all. So they get these rose varieties from hundreds of different breeders. They pack them all into a greenhouse with no extra airflow. I mean, it's humid in Michigan too. So they pack them in and no airflow, no fans. They water from overhead, which is the worst thing you can do. And they let them sit in there and they see what these plants do. And the only ones that make it out are ones that have withstood those conditions. So they're coming out with no black spot, no fungal weirdness going on. And so typically only a few make it out of hundreds or thousands of different rose breeds. And then they're bumped up into field trials where they're planted in field situations and then they're just grown on just to see what the growth habit looks like, what the bloom count looks like. And so several of them don't make it away from that because if it doesn't have a very pleasing growth habit, you don't want that in your garden. They want something that looks very pleasing. So the ones that make it through that trial go into your landscape setting. So they're put in their test gardens in different situations in the um, like paired with different plants to see how they react, see how they react to maybe more sun or a tiny bit more shade. Um, and it's not until they make it through that trial that they are considered to be put part of the line. I had no idea that that went into it and it really like it impacted me hugely. And so I know when these new things come out every year, it makes me so excited because I just know that they're gonna perform that much better for me in my own garden setting. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It just is so exciting to talk about plants, especially this time of year when we're all anxious and we're all planning and getting excited for our own garden season. So we'll pick this video up in part two. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.